offices, schools, hospitals and entertainment venues will be expected to have separate male and female bathrooms, toilets, in a move <laughs> to curb the buildings of gender-neutral facilities? Lose. <laughs> the move has been criticised by some as transphobic, but others argue it makes people feel safer. We're joined now by LGBT campaigner Ramel Affleck and by political commentator Dominic Samuels. Dominique. 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 Oh, Dominique. I'm, I'm a girl. So, so I... It's a gender-neutral name, oh. might be argued. Um, Dom. Dominique. You, you don't agree no. with gender-neutral lose? No, not at all. Um, I think they're extremely dangerous and you only need to look at the data. The data shows this. Um, 90% of sexual assaults in changing rooms, for example, occur in gender-neutral facilities. That's a fact. Um, at schools, where Sorry, they do... Sorry, say, say that again. That sounds, uh, yeah. that sounds like a stat we need to check out. 90% of right. um, sexual assaults in changing rooms occur in unisex facilities. And um, this was done from research that the Sunday Times did, um, and it was actually um, a few years ago they found this out. And it's not completely inconceivable that this would be the case. Mm -hmm. When you're in spaces where men can access women, what will happen is that sexual assaults will, con will occur. And in schools where they're doing this, a lot of the time without even the parents' knowledge, girls are afraid to go to the toilet because of sexual harassment, but also uncomfortable about going to the toilet because of things like period shaming, because groups of boys would be guessing if a girl was on a period or not based upon how long she'd be in the, in the bathroom. And the idea that this is somehow transphobic or anti-LGBT is completely nonsensical. OK, that's interesting. So, look, let's park the okay. stats, because we're just uh, producers onto that, okay. just to find out the source of that. Uh, Ramal, what do you... What do you make of that particular... The, the second point, though, that girls... And Kemi Badenoch, actually, the Equalities Minister, mm -hmm. says this as well, says pupils are avoiding going to the toilet during school hours when they only have access to gender-neutral lavatories. Girls in particular, perhaps boys as well, mm -hmm. they don't want to share toilets because they want to be private. Younger children might be overly curious... Um, about, you know, the, the opposite sex. Mm. And they might not want, for instance, when they are on their period, to use a toilet where they're sharing it mm. with boys. Is it, can you understand that concern? Look, for, for me, um, uh, I think those are legitimate concerns. We live in a country where uh, women and girls are uh, experiencing all sorts of very difficult issues mm. um, pertaining to whether that be physical abuse, verbal abuse, etc. Uh, we know there's a whole school of men, generations of men that are mistreating women, so I'm never going to trivialise that issue. But ultimately, this comes down to creating hysteria about issues that, for me, exist but have different solutions. So, for, for me... Um, uh, you know, is it right that we are in a position where uh, we're talking about toilets being the only place that women feel safe or a, a place of refuge? Uh, to me, we have to, to look at the root of the issue. The root of the issue is actually generations of men mistreating women. But they're, so, so they're a source of, they're a source of uh, privacy for uh, women uh, and people like you want to take them away. Uh, absolutely. And it's not, about, it's not about taking anything away. Ultimately, mm. this is about really thinking about what the solutions are to those issues. Mm. The solutions are twofold. One, that we get men to act differently and when they're not they're ostracised from those spaces. Oh. And second of all, before I... Let me finish. Second of all, the second issue for me is about real, real change for women, which is empowering women yep. to... Uh, in those situations by, for example, things like Ask Annie or Ask Angela, where staff are trained to actually seek out and see the, the, the yep. kind of the signs before these That's things happen. That's after the attack happened. Yeah, yeah, but this yeah. Is these, before, are all, these are all retrospective and they're all, and they're all based upon stopping something... Mm -hmm occurring right. before it actually can. Right, and this is why it doesn't make sense. Because... Staying on toilets for a second, but, Dominic. But there are gen... On aeroplanes, we're used to single sex. Oh, this. I'm, I'm just saying... No, I'm, I'm, I'm no I know, but I'm I'm heard, I've you... seen this aeroplanes in my comments so many times. Um, you go to the O2. Uh, I was there for the Strictly Live tour a few months ago. The men's toilet is empty, uh, and there's huge queues of women, and enormous queues waiting for the women's toilets. Is there sometimes, in some places, 
a really good argument for this? There are thousands well, of fa well, thousands of gender neutral okay. toilets across the country. Are and... they gender neutral or are they literal, literally singular cubicles? Last time I checked on a train, there weren't queues of toilets on a train because right. there's no space. So you mean that the, the cubicle is fine for the cubicle itself to be used by either men, because, but, but women, the point or issue is just one second. Just one, just one second. Mm. The, the point is, yeah. Okay, you've got a cubicle that mm. can only be used by one person. Mm -hmm. Once you go outside of the toilet, you are then sharing a space with other people and the vast majority of those people will either be biological males or biological women. OK. But so, then, to, but <clears> just <throat> to interject, sorry, but just to be really clear, there are plenty of toilets in this country that are not gender neutral where there is a shared space for washing your hands or waiting. So the issue, therefore, isn't gender neutral toilets. It's about maybe the design of the toilets. But, I mean, uh, to, be, to be honest with you, I think this is just another issue where we can perhaps, you know, create a, a kind of... A, 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 this kind of false hysteria around, um, you know, the issues that are important to trans and non-binary people. It's not hysteria. It's, no, it's not hysteria. Yeah. It, it, Girls it, it, being afraid... I'm sorry, cos this issue really annoys me. Girls being afraid to go to the toilet because of things like period shaming and sexual harassment. Let's find real women's Voice ways Wales... To, let's find women's, real women's ways vo to, women's to combat Voice that Wales, issue, which, is a, which is a women's activist group, cited a study by Warwick University that demonstrated four in ten um, girls reported sexual harassment at school. Okay. People like you oh, then absolutely. want to remove we've those got spaces hang on. We've, we've got the women. research that you referred to, Dominique. Uh, Sunday Times... 2017 to 2018, this is a freedom of information request. Uh, changing room sex attacks in council sports centres or swimming pools. 90% were in unisex changing rooms. 10% were in single sex changing rooms. 134 total complaints. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us this Thank morning. You.